this is clickbait. You know that, right? Clickbait! Today, I'm gonna poke a little bit of fun at all the YouTube vocal teachers out there. The Sammy Leibowitz Vocal Academy, the Ernest R. Huckabee Vocal Institute. Institute? You mean your guest room, right? <coughs> There's a thousand of these YouTube vocal teacher schools slash institutes slash academies, and I perused several of them on the internet until I threw my hands up in despair. You know, I shouldn't say that. Some of them actually were good. Some of the same fundamental stuff that I talk about in my Art of Singing series. But you know, for myself, I never set out to want to be a vocal teacher. Singing live is my thing. I just thought maybe some of the people who know my work would like a little bit of insight into how I do what I do. My voice has changed a lot since 1990, since my first record. I hear it. You probably hear it too. My voice is thicker now, it's rounder, there's more tone, and it's a lot less shrill than the old love-hate days. And even then, in 1990, my voice had changed markedly since when I was a young singer in my teens and early 20s. Most people's voices get weaker as they get older, but luckily, mine seems to be getting stronger, and I can't explain it. I only know what I hear, and I'm grateful for it. A lot of these YouTube vocal teachers, or people like me, lead singers explaining how they do what they do, it seems like a lot of them learn to do it the old school way. Time spent in rehearsal rooms, in endless gigs, in shitty little clubs. Others, you just look at them and you know that they've never been in a band. That's how you really learn to be a musician, by being out there. That's how you learn about yourself and where you stand in the big picture. You know what, can you keep your pitch intact when you're trying to scream over a stack of martial amps? Not easy. How good is your ear? How well can you hear? How many songs can you belt out consecutively until you start to experience fatigue and so on? All of these things a vocal teacher cannot really teach that's why my title is so much clickbait, man. No one can teach you something like singing instantly. You gotta work at it. I listened to a guy named Andy Sizik, I think that's how you pronounce his name, and he was talking about something called fry screaming. I'd never heard that term before, but I guess that's what they call the modern version of singing, that Slipknot style vocal. But even though this guy, Andy Sizik, has a completely different singing style than me, his fundamentals were sound. The same fundamentals that would help a young Roger Daltrey or a young Ronnie James Dio were the same basic fundamentals when it came to this fry screaming thing, which, by the way, I would never ever want to do. But it does show fundamentally singing correctly is the same whether you're in an 80s rock band like me or a modern metal rock band. Using your diaphragm, not your throat, not pushing excess air, finding the sweet spot on your vocal cords where you want to project from and keeping it there, and taking care of your health. A lot of people talk about that. Drunk people blow more air. That's no good. Don't do it when you're f***ed up. Don't use cocaine when you sing live. You won't have the same control over your throat. Why? Because your whole f***ing face is numb. I did see a lot of vocal teachers talking about warming up, which is definitely necessary. I warm up, but I don't use the method or the method. And I know for a fact that a lot of singers do use these techniques. I do that show, Raiding the Rock Vault, here in Las Vegas, which features a bunch of singers. So I do hear this shit from time to time. I don't do that stuff. That's just me. If I'm in a pinch and I'm a little bit hoarse, I will use the scale method. La 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 la, la 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 la, then modulate up. La 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 la, la 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 la. It opens your throat up very gradually, but that's generally only when I'm coming off of a cold or some unseen emergency. How do I warm up? I sing a few easy songs. Come Together by the Beatles, 
Oh Darlin' by the Beatles. By singing these same songs, which are totally in my lower range, I can gauge where I am as far as the need to open up my throat for that night's gig. So when I'm on the road at the hotel, I'll start by a little warming up around 11 a.m. if I have, say, an 8 p.m. show. Just a little bit, two to three minutes, that's it. Then a little bit more, an hour or two later, you know, little by little, opening it up. Then by sound check, I'll sing a little bit harder. Then around showtime, I work it a little bit more. So by the time it's showtime, I'm ready to sing full on. I definitely suggest not warming up too much during the day. That also means not talking all day like some people do. Don't do it. Try to limit the amount of interviews you do in press because all that activity can blow your voice out. It will contribute to a marked lack of vocal energy at gig time. A few of these vocal teachers seem to spend a lot of time on resonance and tone. In my opinion, I feel like that's misspent energy. That's just me. See, everyone has a certain character to their voice. Mine is different from yours. Ronnie Dio is different from Steve Perry. By the way, I did that Arnell video and a lot of people were commenting, Steve Perry should come back. They should get Steve Perry back. Bro, Steve Perry is never coming back. He is never coming back. I'm gonna tell you a little secret about being a musician. Once you stop being a musician and you step out of the time machine, you get old. You get old, man. Your voice gets old. Your singing gets old. Steve Perry could never ever go back to where he was singing four nights a week, hour and a half, two hours a night. He could never do it. Robert Plant could never go back to being the Led Zeppelin guy he used to be in the 70s and 80s because it would be a Herculean effort to do so. And they don't wanna do it. They can't do it. Once you step out of the time machine, you start to get old. Music keeps you young. I keep saying that. Music keeps you young. Don't ever stop being a musician. Anyway, back to this whole resonance thing. Resonance is based on the strength of your diaphragm, how you project, dropping the jaw like that, and having your tongue rest down on the lower part of your jaw, like that, like that. That opens up your air channel and helps give you a rounder tone. It's true, it does work. Your diaphragm is acting like a giant speaker or basically a resonant platform. Strong diaphragm, better resonance, better tone. That's why I always suggest singers strengthen their stomachs by doing lots of sit-ups. Not only does that make your diaphragm and your whole stomach apparatus stronger, but it also has the added advantage of making you look better on stage. No one wants to see pop bellies, unless you're in Leonard Skinner, I guess. I've also always suggested that singers start running for the cardio. Having good cardio means you won't poop out after three or four Led Zeppelin or ACDC songs. See, as a front man, you're gonna be expected to move around on stage and sing really good. So yes, you're gonna need lots of fuel in your tank to get the crowd going for the big rock show. One vocal teacher I was watching, I found to be a little bit woke. I don't know, I guess that's the new generation. I found his approach to singing was including a lot of intent. What is he thinking about when he's singing that song? You know, what is he thinking about? What's in his head? Like singers are actors or something like that. Who fucking cares? Is he or is he not singing good? That's all I care about. A lot of new age talk about spirituality and chakras. It seemed to be a little out of place for a vocal teacher. But then again, I come from a different generation. I'm concerned with the nuts and bolts of singing and how to have a good gig night after night. You see, you can't teach someone attitude or how to bounce back from failure. I would have never gotten my record deal or even now still be able to carry on if I didn't have a fucking tough skin to deal with the thousand and one naysayers who will always tell you to give it up. Maybe that's the big difference in my generation compared to the new generation that this generation was brought up on shows like American Idol. So they don't really take the long view when it comes to being a successful musician. Instant fame, that's what they want. It takes years, man, years of struggle, agony. There's happiness and there's glory and there's awesome achievement, but there's also failure and starting over a hundred times and constantly second guessing yourself. 
They didn't tell you that part when you were watching that show, Nothing But A Good Time. By no means was it all a good time, but it wasn't all bad either. It was just life. I wish it would have come easy, but it didn't. I had to wait it out, man, in rock and roll purgatory. I had to wait for the rock gods to decide that I'd had enough agony and poverty to finally throw me a bone. And let me tell you, what happens generally when these instant stars get what they want instantly? Eight times out of 10, they f it up. Drugs, booze, TMZ, because they haven't got the psychological foundation to deal with fame. No one can deal with fame. I remember Christopher Reeve famously saying that for the first two years after he starred in that Superman movie, he actually thought he was Superman. So check it out. You get fame, no fortune of course, because you did sign that Simon Cowell deal. You get famous and you go crazy and in the end you f it all up. Then after you're the flavor of the month for a while and people eat you up and spit you out, they throw you away like Kleenex and your fall from grace is total shock and awe and 10 times more catastrophic because you're too young to know what it's like to be a real musician. What does it really mean to be a musician? Well, you're an artist and 99% of us are destined to be poor, but that's the job we've chosen. Art and freedom has its price. When I lost my record deal, it didn't stop me from being a musician. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, as Nietzsche said. And out of all my old love-hate guys, I survived and thrived. I think learning to sing correctly is an essential thing, so I don't fault people seeking vocal teachers in schools, but remember, being in a band is school. Learning how to be in a band is school. Songwriting, compromise, hardship, all necessary things to learn right there with the breath control and the good hair. Take what you can from good teachers, for sure, but teachers can only teach so much. Real men have to leave the nest and learn to fly on their own. That's my two cents anyway. Drop Al Jizzo, rockin' and rollin'. We'll see you next time.